Okay, talking about naming, um, I know it looks like a big mess up here, but I promise it, it will make sense. Um, first off, we're only going to talk about the first three here. Hopefully you watched the video before this. Um, but we're going to talk about alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, about um, how to name those. We won't talk about aromatic compounds in this video. Maybe I'll make a, a separate video on that. Um, but first off, the, the difference uh, in naming alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes uh, is going to be um, the the parent name of our compound, and that's going to be A-N-E for an alkane. It's going to be E-N-E for an alkene, and it'll be a Y-N-E for an alkyne. Um, we have three examples up here, and we'll go through them all. What we have down here is a is a these are the parent names. Okay. Um, the numbers correspond to the number of carbons that we have. Um, the number of, I, I should specify that, the number of uh, carbons we have on the longest chain in our compound, okay? Um, and that's what our first step is going to be. The other thing that we need to specify on our compounds is any, um, any substituents, okay? And uh, easiest way to think of a substituent is just anything that's branching off of that main chain. Um, so it'd be everything that I have circled here because these, that's our main chain, this is our main chain, and this is going to be our main chain. Um, so anything branching off of that is a substituent, and uh, the way that we name those is we use the same part of the name that we have here, but disregard the the ains or the eens, whatever whatever you're using, disregard that part, um, and it's going to be yl. Okay. So for instance, we have uh, we have a substituent off of our main chain. It's only one carbon atom. One carbon atom would be methyl. Okay. That might not make sense to you yet. If it doesn't, that's okay. Um, so let's start. What I have down here is number one. Uh, the first step in naming a compound is to find the longest chain of carbon atoms. Okay, the examples I have here are pretty simple. Um, we we can see the longest chains because one, two, three is going to be our longest chain. But uh, make sure you're looking at your structures from every possible um, possible way. So we could look at it this way: one, two, three. Look. Uh, what else? One, two, three. Um, of course, just looking at it, you know that the longest chain is three, but always double check because there are going to be times that you'll have examples where you need to turn corners to find the longest chain. Um, but but in the examples we have here, our longest chains are, are kind of right in front of us. Uh, so, for example, uh, we can look at this one, and we could look at it this way. We could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that might be our longest chain. Um, in fact, that is our longest chain, but uh, we also have the same chain on, on the bottom row that goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we might as well look at it this way because it's, it's just easier in our heads to understand a, a structure if we look at it the simplest way. So we have seven carbon atoms on the longest chain there. And then what we have here is we're going to have, uh, there, w there will be carbon atoms on, on each, uh, each point here. So we would have, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, um, that would be our longest chain there. So let's do the first two examples and we'll, we'll get on to uh, the last one because this is uh, obviously a, a little different structure. So, back to the top, um, let's, let's just finish one instead of jumping between these. But we have, our longest chain is three carbon atoms. So that is the parent to our name, okay? Uh, because it's all single bonds, um, we go up here, we see that we have an A and E ending. So what we need to do is we can take that A and E ending, but then we need, uh, we need the prefix to that and that prefix we get from our longest chain, so we have three. So we come down here and we see we have propane. So we have P-R-O-P. Let me, let me write this up again. P-R-O-P. 
be, well, you get the idea. It's propane, okay? Um, but we're not done yet because, like I said before, you have a substituent off of that, and that's just one carbon atom. So one carbon atom, we come down here and look at what it would be. Um, remember I said to disregard this part of the name, and we're going to have YL. So it's, it's a methyl group is, is what that is, and uh, we need to specify that. So we're going to have um, we're going to have a methyl group. Okay, that's going to be that's going to go before our propane. But now we need to specify where that methyl group is too. Um, it doesn't matter what way we we look at this. We could go one two, go one two. Um, so it's two methyl propane, and that's the name. So that one's done. Uh, what I want to show you, though, is say, for instance, we had we had another carbon atom here. Um, you need to you need to always name it. It would still be uh, it would still be two methyl. Of course, the propane would be different, but it would still be two methyl. Uh, if you looked at it the other way and we said one, two, three, and you said three methyl, uh, that would be incorrect because you need to always um, always find the, the lowest number that you can. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty general rule for actually a lot of stuff when you're naming. Always try to use the, the lowest number. If you count it the wrong way, it, it, it's really the, uh, it's a different compound then. Um, so, so we did the first one. Let's do the second one. Okay, we have seven carbon atoms on our longest chain. So if we look down here, we have heptane. Um, but now let's make sure heptane is the right name. Do we want the A-N-E ending on that? Um, well, we have all single bonds here. Um, so yes, we do want the A-N-E ending. Um, I was just checking because I thought, uh, I thought this example had a double bond in it, so I'm just checking to see if these are, these match up correctly. It looks like they do, so I guess that's right. But anyway, um, seven would be heptane. So let's start with that part of the name. Heptane. Okay, um, now we have two groups off of that. And again, uh, both of these groups only have one carbon in them. And that's, and of course that would be our, our methyl group because we're, we're adding YL. We're getting rid of, oops, we're getting rid of that part of the name. So these would be methyl groups. Okay, so we have methyl heptane, but now we need to specify where these groups are. We have two, three, four, five. Two and five, it looks like. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Um, so we would have two and five, but now because we have two groups, we're going to say di. Okay? If we had three groups, we would say tri. If we had four groups, we would say tetra. Um, and that should be the whole name. So we have 2,5-dimethylheptane. Okay, uh, let's move on to our last one now. Um, the, the ones we did up here were straight chain, uh, straight, straight chain um, structures. Now down here, obviously, this is different. This isn't a straight chain because it's not a straight chain. It's enclosed. Um, it, it's like a circle. And so the naming that we use for that is cyclo. Okay, so that's just a prefix that we put in there. Now, uh, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six on our longest chain. Remember, that's what we came up with before. Uh, we look down here, six is hexane. Okay, so we'll do the hex and then uh, look at the, the uh, uh, suffix of that. And we have ane here, but do we want to keep ane? Uh, we do because it's only single bonds. If it were double bonds, then we would go with ene -E as our ending. But uh, we're going to put hexane. So we have cyclohexane, but now we have uh, methyl groups, or I'm sorry, we have uh, substituents off of that. Well, I guess one of them is a methyl group, but we have substituents off of that. We have one there, we have one up here. Um, and then the way you do this is if you have two groups like that, uh, you're going to do it alphabetically. Um, so we, this would be one, and then we're going to count two, three, four. Okay. If we counted the other way, one, two, three, four, we get the we get the same answer. 
but um, in this example we do. But if it if it were different and we had a we had a substituent off of here, um, we could count. Let's say it was the same it was the same thing, uh, but it it was off of off of here instead of here. Uh, we could count one, two, three, four, five, but that's going to be incorrect because again, um, it's faster, and we're going to have a lower number if we count this way. So we'd have one, two, three, and still we're going to start counting with our our uh, our C because we have an H here, and of course C comes before H in the alphabet. So. Um, it might be a little confusing, but once you once you do a few of these, you'll get the idea. Okay, so so far we have cyclohexane, but now we need to specify where our substituents are. First off, uh, we're going to start up here because it starts with a C, so it wins in the world of the alphabet. Um, so we have one C, and then we have two Cs, so if we have two Cs, it's an ethyl group. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna write it up here because I won't be able to fit it in down there. But we would have one ethyl. Okay. Um, then we would have two, three, four, and then this is gonna be a methyl group because there's only one C there. So one ethyl, four methyl cyclohexanes, so that's our entire name, um, and that would be all connected, but I just ran out of room, but 1-ethyl-4-methyl-cyclohexane. So that's that. Um, if there's questions, certainly let me know, put something on the wall, or send me a message, and I will get back to you.